We are here for the BTCC Online Championship Race. First time ever we've been here and it's the Nürburgring, also known as the Green Hell, full of hairpins, long straights and a nice technical chicane. Let's get started with the first race. So let's have a look at race one's grid. Qualifying was very, very short, but you had a great run of all the drivers setting really fast that time with a double knockout of the 200 cord with new teammate Cooney on second. First, not the first time we've seen him, but this is a replacement of Racer Ball. And we got the Volvos on row two. Carsten and M no M3 and then Carsten so it's a knockout of the Volvos for row 2 as we go back a bit you got Rally Morton and Judy Guard Judy Guard head of his teammate Rally Morton because we all know Rally Morton has those nice blue wheels we both go back a little bit further and it's the first row that has not got a team knockout. It's Cotsworth 1986 in that red stone Ford Focus. And a new bot, new driver, Captain Helmet. First time we've seen him with that Vectra. Not a Vauxhall Vectra, an Opal Vectra. Then we go back a teeny weeny bit more. And you've got Geeky 30. And SC61 JGW, a perfect knockout. Although they wished they were a bit higher, because this is a track that hasn't suited them. And then you got Joe Truck V8. He went offline and didn't actually finish a qualifying lap. Which is a shame, because we expected him to be a much, much higher. So let's get this race underway. You're looking at the back of the grid, Joe Truck V8. In the Audi comes down to the middle as we start the race. They are go, go and go. All tightly packed together. Great start from the Audi. You can see the Volvo blocking. You've got the BMW to the inside. It's three. Looks like four wide at certain points. As they come clustering down into this gear one corner. You've got SC61 JGW taking it down to the inside. A lot of cars going wide. You've got them piling together. Just round into the second corner. Dust being thrown up. You've got the Vectra going wide. Joe Shark V8 looks to have lost some positions. He's back down with Geeky and he's swung. He's spit. Whoa. Dust being thrown. The Vectra has spun. Looks like a, the perfect driver of SC61 JGW gone wide there. As they got a battle down into the next corner. A very tight hairpin. And look at them go. Let's have a look at John Boy's view. As he, we look behind, you've got all the cars. You can tell some of them have gone wide. It looks like M3 makes a move on the inside. Does he continue? Does he make it? Yes, no, no. Oh, look, they're side by side into the next corner. Can he? No. John Boy shuts the door in his face. You've got Maddie Morton behind him. Carsten Blues looks to the game position. And John Boy's teammate, Cooney 17, falls down to fifth. And look, you've got... Rally Morton coming into second. He's made a great start in that BMW. Home, trying to impress his home crowd for the BMW. Because the BMW is German, of course, and so is the Nürburgring. As we have a look behind, third and fourth and second, all battling for position. As we come round, this dust being thrown up. Who is it? Who is it? Dust. More smoke. Dust. Look, they're free. 
they're using each other's draft to try and get past. Look at that. They're side by side. Could he make it? There was no gap there. But he's just got past it, it looks like. But then we got this very tight chicane. The Schumacher S's. Can he? No. And there's all the foam wall being thrown everywhere. We knew they were going to go soon. But we didn't know if it's first out. And now it's back to the teammates. Morse might be thrown up. They've gone wide. Cotsworth and the other BMW Volvo. And look, you've got Cooney Santino taken. Then you've got Geeky Fur. You're looking at Julie Garden, you eBay BMW. Bit of damage there as he comes behind Geeky 30 in the Pertec Honda. As they come around this nice corner. Gear 4, it can be taken and under. And look at the draft the BMW's got. Can he make it around? You've got a back four just above him of Racer Paul. No. You've got Cooney Santine versus Cotsworth 1986. And they go three wide into the Schumacher S's. Do they? No. And look, you've got Judy Guard trying to overtake Geeky, but he can't. There's not enough room there. And look, the phone barrier beans hit some more. And you've got the Audi right behind the BMW. Two German manufacturers bat it out down the straight. You had the Volvo go wide there. Cooney Santine overtakes Cotsworth 1986 as well. Now, does Judy Guard overtake the Volvo? Can he? Yes, he does. It was a breeze down that long straight there. Now into this tight break, and it's gear one. It's got a bit of camber, and the Volvo gets back. So does the Honda. No, they go wide. They go wide. They they can't hold the position anymore. As the they go into lap two. As we look now, we've got Valley Morton, MV1 and Cooney Santine all battling for second. As we come down this hairpin, nice view here. You can see the blue wheels of both Valley Morton and MV as they come down into the next corner. Bit of damage on Valley Morton, that's probably from the first couple of corners. Can the Volvo overtake? Valley Morton, obviously very well done on the start, getting up into... Such a high position. And look, you've got the Volvo. Looks to the inside but couldn't make it. Now it's bumper drafting down into Schumacher S's. Can he overtake now? Tight, tight squeeze. He's gone pushing round to the outside. Can he? No. No. Oh, maybe. He cuts. Can he? Does he give back the position though? Down into this. Down onto the straight. The Volvo being pushed by the BMW now. Down to the outside the BMW goes. The BMW though going back as well from sponsors. Now the Volvo looks to have got second. And now you've got Cooney 17 down to the inside. Valley Morton follows. Now into this sharp, sharp corner. Sharpest corner you'll ever see. And look at that. Valley Morton gets his second place back. Cooney 17 and the Volvo now batting for third. Side by side, the Volvo goes wide and falls back behind Cooney 17. But he ain't going to give up now. As we look, it was Carsten Blue. He's lost from so many positions from that. He's come from 8th down to 9th, 10th, 11th. The hot Pertec Honda of SC61 JGW followed identical line to him. And they got thrown into the dust around that sharp, sharp corner. Now it looks like it's going to be a lonely race for Carsten. But there's one thing we all know. He's a fighter and he'll fight his way up through the grid. As we have a look at Cots Cotsworth 1986 in the Redstone 4 Focus. You had the guys behind go three wide. And look, leading them is Geeky 30. We're still in the stadium section at the moment. And you've got a tight, tight battle behind. It looks like Geeky 30 saw a gap around the inside and took it. Does he overtake though? Joe Chuck V8 is right there behind. No, and you've got the you've got the Opal Vector there as well. He's batting for another position there. See some of the cars taking some of the curb there. Joe Chuck V8 looks to be trying all he can to overtake Geeky 30 in the Pertec. The Audi, of course, had a fabulous start. And look, Geeky goes wide, he's being pushed there. The Audi sits past. You'll see that a lot of the cars are starting to you tap each other a bit. 
which is a bit naughty naughty of them. And look, you've got the Opal who understeers into Geeky. Now it looks like Julie Gar's going to overtake the Honda. Does he? Does he? No. Looks like that Honda seems to be fighting well. He's really putting up a fight for anyone to overtake him. It's a damaged BMW. Sits fast down the inside, down onto the straight. Does being kicked up now. That's not going to lose. Geeky 30, a load of time. He could have caught him if he didn't go wide there. And look, you've got the Opal Vectric down to the outside. Can he, can Geeky hold the position? Joey Chuck V8, he's already got up to cost. Worth 1986. We come down to Schumacher S. Geeky goes wide. Oh, no, he's still on track. He's still on track. Now, as we look, you've got the Opal of Captain Helmet. Smack the phone barrier. And it's batting now. They're getting a bit physical now. But the Opal gets it. The Opal gets the position after that. Although, the Honda looks great down the straight. Especially Geeky's. As we come down onto the next lap. Down to the inside goes Geeky. Is he going to make it? Looks like it's going to be an easy pass. If he can make it round. No, he couldn't. He goes right behind the Captain Helmet again. Although he sees a gap. Can he take it? No. He'll be following for another few corners. Although, does he? He's got... Oh my goodness! The rear-wheel drive Opal Vector just slid there. You know what happens with those rear-wheel drive cars. They slide like a monkey off a tree. So we look at Courtsworth 1986 fattening with Joe Truck V8. They were too wide into the corner before. And look, they're still too wide. And you've got Julie Guard there making it a three-way battle for this position. Look at that, side by side, down the straight, the Audi and the BMW. The way they were bumping each other there, you'd almost imagine that they were boxers almost. And look, Joe Truck V8 cuts the corner, but will he overtake? He should be keeping behind there. And it looks like he listened to me now. And yes, down the straight. Can who's going to take it? Is the BMW and the Audi going to take it to the first corner? Long, long straight. This, this, they're just about to end it now. Now we go into the corner, and it looks like the BMW has escaped the clutches of the Audi of Joe Truck V8. So, where is where are they? Where's the other cars? Have they gone wide? Have they escaped? There they are. There's Cotsworth. And it looks like Julie Gard's overtook. Round the outside it looks like. And look, Joe Trump V8 almost tapped him. That's it. Joe Tr Julie Gard has overtaken. Now he's blocking the Cotsworth into the hairpin. Can Joe Trump V8 make a similar pass? Yes, he can. Looks like he's gone round the outside. But will he make it? No. Under Bacon, it looks like the Ford baked a little bit later, but it goes wide. Joe Chuck V8 is gone round the outside with such speed, such, such speed. Can he hold it down to the straight? He can. And looks like he's taken another position. Although, can he hold it down to the S's? Cotsworth 1986 is not going to give that up. It's down to the Bacon. You can't really rotate, there's not enough room. And look, Cotsworth 1986 goes onto the dust. As we look at Rally Morton overtake Cooney 17, BMW versus Honda. Cooney 17, replacement for Racer Paul, and it looks like he's doing better. He's on the podium. So, it's a Hon two Hondas on the podium and an eBay BMW of Rally Morton. Bitter scrapes, bitter scratches. That's part of the touring car scene around here. But Katsuni17 will want to beat his teammate. Or even get near. So he'll be following Rally Morton and trying to beat him. Down into the next corner. Does he? He's getting closer. No, there's still a steady gap. There's not really much way of overtaking. You've got MV1 just behind him. He's almost like Jaws. Dun -dun -dun -dun, coming across. Oh, look, we got Kuni17. It... He looks like to have the speed. The BMW's at a disadvantage here. Look at that. 
Cooney 17, Doughty inside in Schumacher S's. No. The blue wheeled Rally Morton comes, jumps a bit. But no, he holds his position. His position. That's being kicked up there. I tell you what, this race is utterly exciting as he slides. It, does he hold it? He's lost so the speed from sliding. That's a problem with these rear wheel drive cars. And we're into the pit window. So, he'll be pitting if he, that car keeps sliding like that. And look, he, he held the inside down the straight and he's kept his position. Although Cooney 17 is looking at him like a dog looking at meat. This is a battle for second place. BMW versus Honda. BMWs aren't usually in this sort of position. So they'll want it. They'll want to have those juicy little points for the overall championship in Season 1. As we look, lap 6, we've got M3. And... Who's that? Who's that? He's, that's his teammate. The two Volvos are pitting. Carsten and Blue and M3 trying to gain as many, as, many position, as many positions as they can by pitting early. No cars around. Let's see how they do. As we look at the battle for 9th, 10th and... The, no, 10th, 9th and 8th. That's the Vectra versus a Honda. And then there's a Honda behind. Geeky 30 ahead of his teammate, but he's... Look at that. Both the Geeky and... Captain Helmet go wide. Are they gonna? Well, there's contact. The side in. There's three wide. But it looks like Geeky 30's gone. Battle off his teammate. Will he? Will he hold the position? Down the straight we go. You can tell the difference between two drivers. Ge Geeky 30's the one in the yellow costume. And look at that. They're side by side. This is a tight, tight battle. Dust being thrown up. That's, that's SC61 JDW. He's just lost the position. He's lost another position to Captain Helmet. But look at this. Geeky almost went wide there. He's got several understeer problems this race. This is not his usual 1,000 mile car. And look, he tapped the Opal. Sheesh. Utter action. He almost wrecked it. He's... So yes, we got... Whew, Captain Helmet. Geeky 30, SE61, all come to the pit at the same time. It's now the battle of the pit crews. And it looks like Geeky 30 thinks it's raining with that with the windscreen wipers going off. Is that that or he's mad? And no Captain Helmet comes out for, in front of everyone. In front of the other two. This is a horrible track for the Honda Civics. But the crowd are cheering their support for every driver out there. You have Joe Truck V8 pitting as well. There's, is that John? That's John pitting as well. He'll be having a huge lead. Then you've got the BMW. Then the Audi. As they come down into the first corner. There might be a little battle on the cold tyres of the Audi and the BMW. They've been tightly packed together. So it's the All-Stars versus the eBay boys. And no, before you ask, those BMWs are not on the site. I repeat, they are not on the site at the moment. But yes, doesn't look like it's going to be much batting until later, unless the BMW ahead makes a mistake. So there's Valley Morton. He'll be coming into the pits now. That will can John Boy the lead. Did you see the drift coming into the pit lane? You saw the banner there, Heidrich Adler, which sounds more French than German, but it says drive with passion, and it looks like Valley Morton is in that eBay BMW. Well, he won't be at the moment because he's floating because it's now time for the pit crew to do what they need to. And there's Scottsworth 1986 just there, Will, as he pitted. No, Cotsworth 1986 is pitting right now. John Boy goes past as you can hear him. Hear him. There he is. And look, you've got a battle behind us. There's Judy Gard versus Joe Truck V8. Audi versus BMW. We knew there was going to be a battle in this. Yes, there is. As you can see, 
damage all over that BMW. He looks like he's gone through World War III. And we're still in the stadium section. You've got the Joe Truck V8 in the Audi trying to overtake around the outside. He doesn't. This is mental. This is excitement at its best. This is like going on the roller coaster with popcorn in your face. And that they both go wide. BMW's loose. That's the problem with those rear wheel drive cars. And that's why Joe Truck V8 also went wide. But he's got better traction coming out that corner. And look at that. Down to the inside. No outside he goes. Looks like Julie Guard went wide, but he'll be holding off the inside here. And he holds it for another corner. But can he hold it off here? Can he? Can he? This is madness. Look at Joe Chuck V8. He's like Jaws, like I said earlier. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Trying all we can to find that gap to nibble off that position. Damage all over as we come to this tight tight corner Joe Truck V8 who should be sticking behind as he you saw the dust be thrown up there but look round the outside he goes can he can he you numpty you can't really overtake round the outside but look he can't really make the cut back down to the inside using the draft of the BMW so coupe versus big chunky estate there Audi versus BMW as they come down into turn one. Gear one corner and they're side by side. There's side contact there. The BMW's gone wide and wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. He's like Mr. Wobbly there. But look at that. He's still holding it. Joe Truck V8 makes room. And look, there again, he's he's trying. Now he goes around the outside, but he gets back to position back, which is very, very nice of him. Very gentleman like. And we're back down. This long, this short straight, straight, and look at that. Joe Truck V8 cuts back. He's used massive speed to get round the outside there, and he's just overtaken the BMW of Julie Guard. But Julie Guard's not going to surrender. His guns are blazing, and he wants that position back. Can he make it down the straight? No, he doesn't look like he's got enough speed coming out. Oh, I may be wrong. Commentator's curse. He looks to be coming down the out. No, he can't go on the inside. Down to the outside. Racing line. He overtakes. He holds off Joe Truck V8. He had the guts to go back out there and get that position back. Amazing. This is excitement at its best. And Joe Truck V8 comes down to the inside. Tap in. Can he down that long, 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 long straight? And Joe Chuck V8 overtakes. Now BMW is behind. Julie Guard wants that position back. Can he? Down to the inside, side by side. It's all or nothing for these two. And the BMW looks to have the inside and. But has he got the speed coming out? Now we know those houses are very good at the start and should. And very good there. No, we spent three and a half. We, we're going to spend nearly four minutes looking at these guys. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at some other cars battling as tight as this. 7th and 8th, Cotsworth 1986 versus Carsten Ballou. Battling for, for 7th. And looks like the Volvo goes wide. The BMW... No, the Ford. Ford, we were looking at battle too long, weren't we? There. Now you've got the Ford of Cotsworth 1986. Sorry for the, the inconvenience. But look, he's blocking that very, very tall car versus a very low Volvo. Well, he's very short, but look at that down to the inside. Damage everywhere on these cars. And look, look at that Cotsworth 1986. Blocked. He holds the position. And looks like the Volvo's going to come back at him. Will he? No. Now the windscreen wipers of the Ford are going wild there. It's out of it. There's a lot of rain, which it seems very unlikely because there's no clouds out there. I know that some drivers out there do not cloud spot in while they race. But look at the Volvo. He wants that position. He's hungry after that awful, awful incident that he had. Very unlucky. Just locking up and looks like he's gone wide and he loses it. He can't overtake now. That gap's way, way, way too huge. And Cotsworth 986 keeps his seventh place for a bit.
bit longer. And oh my goodness, Geeky30 has gone down to last place. No, you can hear his voice in that cockpit. Oh damn. And poor guy there, as he comes down into the hairpin. He's really made a mess of this race. He'll be hoping that he can make full advantage of pole next race. Valley Morton there, catching M3-1. Can he catch up by the end of the race for third? That'd be a nice little trophy on the mantelpiece for the eBay BMW team. Their starting bid is fourth place at the moment. And will they be trying to get the other blue wheeled M3-1? And look in the background, you've got the battle of Julie Gard and Joe Truck V8 still going on. And Valley Morton goes wide. He holds his position. He doesn't lose much time. But yes, how can his teammate of Julie Gard be still batting that Audi? As these reviews get longer, at the races stay the same, same kind of length for 20 minutes. The battles get so much tighter and so much longer and my folk gets sore. As we look on lap 10, Carsten Ballou versus Scottsworth 1986. He stays in front at the moment but the Carsten Ballou has really caught up. You can tell that Volvo's much, 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 much faster than the Scottsworth 1986 Ford. Down the shape we go. Bit of a gap, bit of a gap. Can it close though? It closed a minute ago, but it opened up. It's like a yo yo, it goes long, short, long, short. And look at that, Carson Blue has really tightened the gap now. You can see all the tyre marks of where drivers have been smacking down on that throttle and going through it into this corner. Now, this long straight. Who's going to have the advantage? The Ford or the Volvo? Volvo team looking to be trying all he can to gain and gain enough positions just to get good points. Because I remind you, his teammate is in third. Even though we know Carsten Blue as a very unlucky driver and we do wish him the best of luck for the next few races because he's had a few little incidents. And it looks like the red car with the black bonnet just lengthening the gap that little bit more. <coughs> no wild signs, no problems, none of those breaking boards being hit. But the Cotsworth 1986 goes wide and he holds position. But yes, the mangled Volvo behind with a bit of damage. But it is still boxy, as you can tell. And he's just not going to gain that position. Julie Gard versus Joe Chuck V8. Looks like there's a bit of tapping, bit of bumping. Round the Schumacher S's. Joe Chuck V8 in the Audi goes to the inside. Side by side into the next corner. As they'll be seeing the white flag. And it will be guns are blazing. It'll be World War Three between these two. And the Audi stays in front. It just sots in front. But the BMW will be trying all he can to take him around the shape. Can he? The BMW looks to the inside, bat in. Down to gear one. Can he actually break? He over under breaks himself, but doesn't fall into the dust, which is very well done. Because I'm amazed that he didn't take off from the speed he was thrown into that corner. And look at that, he's right behind Joe Chuck V8 again. So, a bit of gap, but it's a last lap, and that, that driver there of Julie Guard will be trying all he can to get past. You never say never to a race driver when it comes to racing for a position. As we come round, can he? No, does looks like the gap's too big. As we look at John Boy, 1980s. 1975, come round to the last corner. He's team of Ivan 
over on the pit lane cheering their heads off as they see their driver take another win even with another 100 kilograms added onto their cars and with the teammate coming second as well their team piss heads racing are going mental look at john he's kicking his arm out of the car great race by him and great race by his teammate but yes, a big story for the Pertec team. Bottom two positions. Oh no to um, But the part that supports SE61JDW will be happy that they've finally this season beaten Geeky30. You can see, pretty picture there. But wow, look at that. He'll be happy. But yes, look, as the race finishes... You've got Geeky30 trying to overtake. Well, that's useless, mate. So, let us have a look at the final positions. John Boy comes first with his teammate. Second, it's a 1-2 knockout from the Pissheads team. With the Honda Accords, MV1 takes third place in the Volvo. Then you've got Rally Morton bringing pride. To the eBay BMWs in 4th. LD should be happy with 5th. That's Joe Truck V8 in 5th. In the LD for All Stars. On Gran Turismo. Judy Guard is the other eBay BMW. In 6th place. Cotsworth 1986. Comes 7th. Nice tight batting. Between most of these drivers. 5th, 6th and 7th. Carson Blue Climbed his way up into 8th. Wow, I say wow, well done to him, that was quite a fight for him. Captain Helmet, clap, 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 he's the only opal, opal in the grid, and he comes ninth. Meanwhile, you've got two Honda Civics of the Pertec guys, SC61, 10th, and Geeky30, 11th. Now let's have a look, who got the fastest lap? It was John Boy, as he has... Many other races that he's done. Now let's prepare for race two in our next cov race coverage. I hope you can join us there and we'll see.